Hi, Carl. Ah, oh, there we go. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, how are okay. you doing? Good, good. How are you? Good. <laughs> Our first meeting. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> Let's see, okay, ready. What's the time over there? It's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's 6 p.m. Oh, good. Good, 6 p.m. And uh, thank you so much for participating and coming up uh, this meeting. Thank you so much. So appreciated. Oh, I'm glad, glad to be a part of it. Very happy. Uh, first, how are you doing? How's going life over there? <laughs> Going well. It's been it's been a pretty hot. Well, I mean, relatively, um, it's around thirty two degrees uh, today. So, the the beach is maybe ten minutes or five minutes a bike ride away. So, uh, before before now, I had a little swim and then all nice and cool and ready. Good. And today, I just want to meet with you and is. Uh, say my appreciate uh, to participate and support our uh, event. Actually, we were just trying to uh, promote Japanese culture and with the different units. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much. Actually, please accept my apologies. I couldn't, I didn't know, I didn't have any information about uh, you your community, your uh, activities. Oh, no, then, no problem. Then uh, Yuzu, she, uh, yeah, she uh, told me something about you. And she said, oh, maybe Carl can, yeah, join us. And then you, you're with us. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I'm glad. I'm glad she suggested or uh, made the connection. Yeah, uh, right. I would like to, if it's possible for you, I would like to record this the, uh, meeting and put it uh, in your YouTube channel or my YouTube channel. It doesn't matter where you wish, and sure. yeah, we can put it and yeah, we can share it if you wish. Yeah, let's and, do that. Yeah. And first, uh, yeah, let's probably, uh, if we put it in your YouTube channel, people will not know about me. Or if we put it in our channel, people will not know about you. And if you wish, let's just a short introduce, uh, let's uh, introduce us one by one and uh, to the guests and yeah, it's your turn. We could please. Should we put it put it in each other's, uh, and then have a cross link, have a link to each other's thing. Yeah, if so you yeah, if you wish. Or, yeah, if you wish. Any any anyway is fine with me. Um, I'm not professional about this. No, definitely. I just uh, I just started to use Instagram like one year ago. <laughs> That's oh. <laughs> That's why my generation is no, no, not the professional about the social media things. Oh yeah, no, I recent I'll make two only maybe two years ago or something. Of, yeah, just friends would say, "Oh, you have to use it." So okay, mm -hmm. um, um, okay. What should I say? What was the question? Yeah, question is, um, could you please introduce yourself for us and for me? Well, who are you? When did you start this uh, shamisen uh, story? And oh, just yeah. a short, okay. just short, introduce you. Then I will introduce myself. Okay, sounds good. Uh, well, I'm Kyle Abbott. Um, I'm 30 years old. I live in California, Santa Cruz. Uh, I've been playing shamisen since I was 14-ish. I started learning, uh, well, I started learning mandolin and when I was seven and then guitar, banjo, and kind of bluegrass instruments. Um, but all this time, my father played the shakuhachi, which he still does, which he learned in Japan 
about 50 years ago now, or more or less. Um, so when I was 12 or so, I started learning Chakwachi and through that discovered Shamisen. Um, and at the same time, there's a fellow, a half Japanese fellow, Kevin Metz was living here in Santa Cruz and he would do street live um, only a few blocks from my house on, <laughs> very, very regularly. So I would see him play Tsugaru Jamisen. Um, and uh, well, at this time I was just self-teaching, doing self-study and learning kind of traditional pieces, not Tsugaru um, songs. And he kind of, you know, I wanted more connection in the you know, Japanese world and Shamisen because there was nobody else I knew. Um, so I met him and he taught me basics and um, he sometimes brought over Shamisen players from Japan, Tsugaru Shamisen players. One of them, Nita Masahiro-san, who became my business partner later. Late, later, um, He brought him and we had a connection. And um, yeah, then, uh, well, let's see. So now it would be, I was 16 or so and I was homeschooled and my brother and I were. And, uh, you know, I was in a way kind of looking something to kind of give to the world. And I was very interested in Shamisen um, and upon my father's uh, suggestion, I learned to try making one, building one on my own. Um, and on 20, 2005, YouTube was made. Um, and I just filmed just videos of myself, you know, banging out the first homemade one, um, uploaded that. And I was very surprised that other people in the world had commented and said, oh, I would like to learn and <laughs> At this time, I didn't think anybody else really outside of Japan was interested in shamisen. I thought I was one of the few. So, but seeing people react to it, um, I, you know, it seemed like an opportunity to kind of give something, you know, to help or share. Uh, so I, after the first one, I started writing a book, um, an instructional manual for, you know, how to build as well as how to play, like beginning beginning songs, well, not beginning songs, but as, as well as a kind of a score book as well. That, of course, went through many revisions, you know, over the course of time. Um, so boom, I put that out. And at this time, I, again, I thought, you know, this is just a hobby because nobody's interested, you know, relatively, compared to guitar or ukulele, nobody's interested in shamisen, so I shouldn't make it a, a full-time thing. Um, but I was surprised that you know, every week there'd be, you know, between two, let's just say at least two orders for the for my book um, a week all around the world. And it was surprised that sometimes within the same city, there would be multiple orders. So two people bought a Shamisen book and I'm sure they didn't know each other. <laughs> then you start the community with this. That's why I started the community. Oh, that's okay, the next, so now everybody knows, you know, has a book to know how to build and how to play shamisen. What's the next thing people need? Well, they should all get together or at least know that they live nearby. So that's how Wachido, um, I started that to kind of, yeah, have easy access to community and instructions, um, um, such and such. That's that. That's, that's awesome. That's wonderful. It's like, thank you. Yeah, and also, and also uh, Carl Abbott has a musician background from the family, right? Your mom right. and your father, they have. And <clears throat> if the neighbor wouldn't uh, exist, uh, you will just play guitar or any other <clears throat> European music instruments, right? And then you just start with... The, like you met you know, with him. Odd. You know, well, probably so, but um, you know, it's, it's hard to know how life would change if you know, just one little yeah. piece was gone. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, definitely. I wasn't terribly. I mean, I was. I like counter tenor, like some different things, but I wasn't always terribly into Western music. So, you know, oh. I mean, nowadays I'm also enjoying bird photography and things so you know i might have 
Oh, I, I saw your Caught pictures. Well I saw your times. photographs. That was really nice. You, oh, thank you. You just you you oh, just you. use Facebook, right? Not the Instagram. You oh, you, use the in, now I use Instagram. Oh, I, I was I was searching you okay. in the Instagram, but I couldn't find it out. Sorry, that's why. Oh, uh, Bachido uh, official. Oh, yeah, I'll later I'll, oh, It's the but, same thing as Bachido official, right? Not the Kyle Abbott. Oh, I got it. Right oh, right. Now. Yes. Now I got it. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And foolish, uh, the bird pictures on there because it's just for Shamisen, but oops. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. And me, my name is Dogan and Mesut Dogan. And I live in Yokohama. I live in Yokohama. I just come to Japan uh, eight years before. And me and my mm -hmm. family, yeah, my wife, my two kids, we uh, we are living in Yokohama right now. And actually, and my professionality is uh, hospitality business, hospitality management. And oh, interesting. And it's like easy to uh, hotel manager. I was hotel manager, and I just come to Japan after I come to Japan, and also study Japanese after finish my study. Uh, just started with the hotel uh, again, but uh, four years before, for four years before, and I was in Shodoshima. And oh, that's a lovely, love Shodoshima. Yeah, it's a really nice place, Setonaikai. It's like now I'm from Turkey, the Mediterranean side of Turkey. It's like, and if you, if mm -hmm. the first time when I got the Shodoshima, I just I'm really surprised. Wow, it's Mediterranean Sea, it's like <laughs> the olive trees, yeah. yeah, olive trees, and people are, the, yeah. And the coast, the kind of the, the coast of the water, so. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's so similar like the Mediterranean, the, the city where I come from. And also people are so relaxed. They are moving so slow. <laughs> it's like the uh, city where I come from because um, why do we need the hurry? Come on, is yeah. there, there's something like, and uh, but the thing is the culture was different uh, with the Mediterranean. And uh, I, we went to move to Shodoshima, April, uh, but from after April till uh, September, uh, I couldn't socialize. I couldn't mm -hmm. socialize well as the other people who come to Japan as not as like a tourist, foreigners who come to Japan for the normal life and adapt and dive in the Japanese social life. As you know, <clears throat> there is a like a invisible wall that you just crush. But uh, that wasn't problem for me. But after I went to Shodoshima, the, this invisible uh, wall uh, just keep me from the uh, like I couldn't socialize well as much as I wish and I was talking with my uh, hotel owner uh, Mr. Kinoshita and telling to him and yeah there is something is there something that helped me to socialize with the people because and um, I mean you called me here to uh, renovate this uh, Setonaika, I mean the Shodoshima, make it a resort and make it a resort area and help you to make this area as a resort, call more tourists and some, uh, this area needs some upgrades. We are working uh, for this, but to be able to uh, succeed uh, success uh, succeed about this project we need to have really strong relationship uh, with the local people every time we need to hear their um, comments and but 
and he said, okay, there, two weeks later, there is a local festival, Taiko festival that you can go and participate. And then I will give you two days off. And I said, okay. And five in the morning and get the hunt in and downstairs slowly walking through the like uh, the area the people are gathering and that was the first time when i saw the matsuri that was surprising me shock like there was a taiko dai it's something like uh, uh, two long uh, horizontal bow in the middle two of the, these two bows is a huge uh, drum and four kids around the drum and they are just doing the I, yeah. I, did, I did that too uh, really? In 2014, I visited with a friend and they had kind of a, they said there was a shortage of, you know, young men because women aren't allowed to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they said, you know, come on, because we, we need people to lift the thing, so. Yeah, and wow. there, there was the around the drum, Japanese drum for uh, kids and uh, drumming and say something and uh, the people on this uh, structure was almost three tons and they were just shouldering and lift up and trying to move it and, and throwing they, too they yeah yeah, oh, yeah 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 and cheer and throwing and i just surprised why what is the mentality it's hurts it's like what are they doing what is the point and uh met with them slowly that their their first reaction about me there was like something oh is that martian that is that <laughs> space alien or they were really shocked and uh, then slowly slowly i start to pretend and copy what they do and say what they say and slowly after they just try after they just get used to me and uh, tr start to ask question about them why what they, what is this what is that what is that and get informations and after three or four and almost uh, we went to the main, uh, uh, mi in the middle of the, there is a, a big shrine in the middle of the island and uh, in front of the shrine, big square, everyone ga uh, gathers over there and 4 p.m. and we were just half drunk and 60% of the island population they were saying my name. Hey, Dogan. Hey, Dogan. How are you? And cheers, cheers. And and it's several hours. And the next year, uh, that was wonderful experience. The next year, I participate again, and they told me that. And the, there was six people uh, behind the uh, Taiko Dai, and. I was like, like self-confidence and everyone knows me. Hi, but these six guys didn't say anything, didn't like salute or anything. Why, what is going on? And I just asked uh, uh, Mr. Takahashi, who are they? What, what, is, what is going on? And he told me that, no, no, no. They are part-time workers which we call from outside the Japan, outside the island from Takamatsu, we pay them uh, mm -hmm. money to help us. And I said, helping a Matsuri is a job? Eh? And what, what is the point? And 
then I realized all the stories, as you know, the population is getting down and also ruler areas, they don't have uh, more young people. All the young people just went to Osaka, Kyoto, Tokyo, Chiba for the working, for the business, for the education. That's why they don't have young population to be able to keep survive, keep going on these uh, traditions and they need uh, part-time job workers or anything. And I just tell them, no, no, maybe we can organize something else on Facebook. We can call uh, participants. And as uh, yeah, my story is started with this and we built a package, Matsuri accommodation package in our hotel and which try to help the people then we just started with this then uh, after two years uh, after this matsuri i just realized that i went uh, almost 400 different matsuris wow. around japan and start people start to talk with me interview with me and then suddenly Anna, ANA, knocked my door and he told me that we are working on a project, please help us. Why? Why me? Because you are the someone who knows all the Matsuris and all the different destinations. We are trying to build a map, Matsuri map, oh. and you can help us. And I helped them. Then for the money, they said, yeah. And slowly, slowly, that, that was my hobby. My hobby became slowly, slowly my job. And now we are just trying to, and actually it's a simply, and I am using Japanese culture as like Matsuri. I'm using the Matsuri as a magnet and to call more and more uh, guests from outside Japan and enjoy and experience the Japanese culture, real Japanese culture, the local culture, and get uh, really real and nice uh, memories. Mm -hmm. And they can go back to their countries and promote Japan, promote the Japanese ruler areas and real culture. As you know, uh, if you say Japan or especially United States and Europe and uh, America, if you say Japan, everyone says sushi, samurai, ninja. No, Japanese culture is a little bit deeper and bigger than this. And people were enjoying and yeah, we just, uh, that's my story a little bit long. Sorry about that. No, no, no. I just start with, with like this, and now I'm just trying to work on use the Matsuri as a tem, tema and to build a festival tourism in Japan. That's wonderful. It's, I, li I like how it connects like over the eight years or from your time in Chodoshima and then uh, the, the origin. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we're, we're just working on it. And there was some difficulties, uh, but uh, that were with the challenging, all these difficulties, we, are ju we just keep going on. And yeah. yeah, we are here. And yeah, I would like to also talk with you about uh, your, um, Yo, uh, you and me, uh, your story and my story. And our common point is we are not Japanese, but we are working on uh, Japanese culture to spread around the world and trying to, and also, and I would like to learn about more about your story. I um, mean, uh what uh 
that, that was the word in your uh, homepage and Bachido, hmm. Bachido homepage. Carl Abbott uh, inspires the world with the Japanese shamisen. Oh yes, that's on my <laughs> my uh, solo artist page, uh, three yeah, string yeah. pile. Yeah, it, it's a little um, florally or a little uh, uh, what do I say, uh, buttery or you know for a for the business, but. <clears throat> Yeah, it's like. And um, when did you uh, when did you start performing Japanese uh, shamisen? And what what about what is your uh, feelings about the, this shamisen? Uh, well, just your shamisen story. Yeah. Um, well, fill in. I might kind of in the intro in my introduction. I guess that, that kind of filled the main points. Um, I think basically why I gravitated to Shamisen specifically be, because, um, hmm. I mean, at the time I started it, you know, I didn't really have anything else I was super interested in. I mean, I was interested in karate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and at, at the time, I almost thought maybe I would be an instructor, like pursue that really diligently. Um, but, you know, there's so many people doing it. Um, and, you know, I'm the youngest sibling in my family, um, only out of two, my, my bro <laughs> older brother and I. And he always, he was, you know, let's just say better, you know, relative, better at everything. And he could help people and you know yada yada and i didn't really have anything i could do um you know to to help folks that they couldn't already do themselves um so kind of with shamisen i got that you know the social there was the social benefits that came on i could provide something to the world and those people in the world who are interested in shamisen um you know by giving you know, I also receive the social acceptance. Let's put it that way. So the the, show, the social acceptance was there. Um, and I think that helped me, you know, continue bringing Shamis into the world. In the beginning, as I was playing it, you know, learning when I didn't think there was anybody else, you know, I, I practice regularly every day, um, but it was only after starting Bachido that I took it even more seriously because I felt, you know, this first community, this is representing Shamisen for the world. I should, I'm representing Shamisen for the world. I should, I should be better. And I should, you know, <laughs> be as good as I can be, be as good as I can be because, you know, I, there was maybe I didn't practice for a month because I was doing something else and you know yada yada. Um, so I don't know if I how far I actually would have how long I would have played if there wasn't this social connection because music is a social music is a social thing, and um, you know some people do they'll just play at home for for decades for years. Um, without any anyone else involved and they'll maybe be happy. Um, um, and you know, that's not really, not quite me. So who knows if I would have continued playing Shamisen if it was just me in a room here. Um, the, you know, I, I really like just giving and help, helping people, assisting what they can do. So um, that inspires me to Continuing shamisen. Oh, please edit this. Yes. Okay. No, actually, uh, after I start to uh, like explore you, and I saw your YouTube channel, that was you and your partner. She was. Uh, uh, you guys have really, really fantastic, funny uh, videos. Music. Oh, yeah. 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 
Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, music videos in your YouTube channel. And actually, I'm, you know, I'm uh, living in Japan, living in this Japanese cultural things. And my, my not, not as like my hobby, this like, now it's my business and uh, my job. And shamisen, if you talk about the shamisen and the ladies like poker face playing and the musics, but your channel was, we were watching your channel with my wife. Uh, she was so, she's Japanese and she was so, so enjoying uh, you and your uh, partner uh, things. And our favorite one, and Shamisen with Batman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was wonderful. She's, uh, oh. it was wonderful creatively. Wonderfully, it's like awesome. Like that. And, smooth nicely gently put the seeds into the people's mind about japanese culture and you guys uh, your style is really nice gently funny and uh, so yeah when i was when people would actually and um, uh, the the user when you uh, two months ago and uh, a month ago and when we were talking about uh, the uh, footage uh, video footage uh, of uh, uh, this project nippon promotion project uh, promotion uh, pr videos in kanda shrine and I was trying to use the same uh, way, like uh, funny way, but I couldn't do maybe, but, and she, uh, the user, she told me that, oh, you, uh, like, if you watch uh, the Carl's videos, <laughs> you may like it. And yeah, I would like two months ago, I just start to like, who is this Kyle? Well, what was, what's going on with this? <laughs> and I just start to check your uh, videos and yeah, like, and oh. after, after I received like uh, you and your partner, you're just playing and your partner like doing this and oh, two, yeah. yeah, two people, one shamisen, one song was also nice uh, uh, thing. Yeah, actually, uh, I really like your style uh, about teaching and introducing Japanese shamisen uh, and Japanese music culture uh, to the world, to the uh, people. Uh, the way you introduce it uh, is really nice. I really like it. And Thank you. yeah, definitely. I just want to meet and uh, we'll, yeah, I'm so happy to get uh, you get in our uh, involved our project. And yeah, definitely. So happy about this. Uh, actually, I'm happy too. yeah. Actually, the, I'm my wish is like getting the same color. Uh, as like your uh, color is like funny, gently, smooth way to spread because yeah, I don't want to be the uh, like general shamisen player image. Mm, yeah. yeah. Uh, the brothers, it, yeah, the famous one. Oh yeah, Yoshida Kyoda. Yeah, Yoshida. Yeah, they are and two like one month ago like kiki sisters oh yeah i don't think they're sisters but uh they, they just kiki, say yeah, yeah. yeah kiki 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 sisters kiki and they're good yeah i um i yeah when surprisingly when i when i started or at least maybe for the first five years or so of doing shamisen 
you could say I was more like most people would consider how they're with shamisen. I was very serious in a way. I took it too seriously because you know not being fully comfortable or being one with the shamisen. Let's say, you know, I felt all of these cultural connections to it, so I felt you know. Uh, over serious or there's the the magic and the um you know it, it should be respected not that i don't respect it but there's you should this reverence <laughs> then um, then you realize that why so serious <laughs> yeah kind of or yeah like as as i grew up or got older um you know i just became more comfortable with myself and spending you know over 10 years with the shamisen i got even more connected where it kind of was separated from the culture and just you know feeling it as the instrument just by itself just the wood the skin the strings and there is the connection to shamisen uh, to japan and i was already connected to japan through shamisen so had a lot of friends and business colleagues and such so with that kind of comfort it didn't feel like there was a wall between you know these two entities, Japan and the shamisen. Yeah, there was that comfort. So it could kind of just bring humor, bring my own personality. And my personality tends to be on the humorful side or something. And you, have you ever been to Japan? Oh, yes. Um, nine times, I think. I ever, Once a year, I tend to go for shamisen related. Uh, oh, the, for the shamisen related. Well, what was the first time? When was the first time? 10 years ago, um, May. Oh, uh, veteran, senpai. Yeah. For, um, <laughs> uh, for doing the Tsugajami Sen Taikai in Hirosaki. Ah. And it was doing karate there. And then the, um, meeting shamisen makers and kind of that was the first, uh, it was always a dream before, and so that was kind of the first passage, as it were. Um, yeah, and then the next year to with my brother to do our testing for karate, which we were doing at the time, as well as meeting some shamisen people. 2012, um, recording an album with now my business partner, Nita San, and Kevin uh, Metz, who used to live in Santa Cruz, my original teacher. Um, he was then living in Japan again, so we all met up in Sapporo to uh, record. Uh, 2013, Nita-san and I, we brought together, was it 15, 13 people, maybe 17, I forgot, uh, from around the world to compete in a group, um, the group division for the Hirosaki Taikai. Um, someone from people from Sweden, Canada, the um, America, China, um, I forgot. Um, we all competed and that was the first time so many foreigners competed at this one, at one time. Um, we won third place and then the next year we competed again and were, before we just wore t-shirts with different colors, but this time we uh, got Han Ten for <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, I love it. For these, actually, these are the ones we wore. Um, and at this time, I think this, the, the Taika used to be called, um, what was it called? Is the Hirosaki uh, Coconut? No. Goodness, I forgot. Well, they, they changed it to Sekai Taikai um, the following year, I think because just the more presence of foreigners in there, they thought, well, let's make it a world kind of a more international thing. So they did that, we came back and then we got first place um, in AQ. Uh, and then after that, you know, doing the tournaments were fun, um, but all this time, you know, starting Bachido in 2011, you know, I didn't go to business school. I didn't go to college, um, but instead using that time and using that money to kind of just start the business and discover 
you know, uh, learn, learn through doing. So it was, I was seeing like, what is the, what is the real role of Bachido? What's the point? What am I doing with this? So doing these competitions, you know, it seemed maybe that was a good thing to do. Um, and while it was, it brought people together, it was still in the direction of, you know, competition, not really bringing together to have fun with shamisen. It's not about, you know, dominating the others. Uh, so after the 2014, I switched to doing workshops, to bringing together my partners, um, the instructors, as well as uh, people from around the world to meet in Japan um, for like three days of workshops, where it was very intense um, practice and in that people could, you know, uh, connect. Like someone, uh, the first time a person from Russia came with the shamisen, another one from uh, Finland came and, you know, we all ate together, played together, formed connections. Um, and then the next year we did in Berlin, uh, in California. <clears throat> next year we did Japan again. That's 2016, no, 2017. 2018, took a break, I went to Thailand. Uh, 2019, Japan again. Uh, and where I, that was last year and I competed again um, at the Taikai for myself. And we we're going to go, my partner Sue and I, we are going to play in the Olympics um, for the opening uh, 2,000 or 3,000 person shamisen orchestra. But the coronavirus happened, so we didn't go to that. Oh, maybe. But instead, I got cancer. So it was actually good that we didn't go. So I was able to detect it in time uh, and had surgery. Oh, really? Oh, you're right, Roman. No. Oh, yeah. No, no I'm fine. It, 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 it was in the time that we would have been gone uh, to Japan. So oh, that's wonderful. It's good we didn't go. Yeah, it's a good news. That's <laughs> a bad, made, bad thing made a good reaction. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's like, you you came to Japan uh, to for the shamisen, and I just want to ask the what is your first what uh, uh, inspiration like you came to Japan and what did you had any funny experience or shocked or any anything what what, what was your uh, was Japan as like your imaginations? Oh, the, yes. Um, it was, or yeah. what was different? What was different? And for, for well, me, for me, I mean, the, before I came to Japan, I was actually, I had, I had been to, I've been to the United States, uh, Georgia, and oh. Israel and some other countries. But uh, before I come to Japan, I didn't know anything, anything about Japan. And just Samurai Ninja, Tokyo, that's it. Mm -hmm. And the, the imagination, you know, the, because of the uh, Samurai movies, Samurai Jedi movies, I was thinking that Japanese is uh, speaking like, uh, uh, the speaking so thing and after i came to japan i that totally was different the japan was totally different and yeah and oh, yeah. it's uh, as like almost two two years to adapt this uh, oh wow yeah love like many things first for, for example like i came to japan start uh, like socializing meetings with the from some friends most of them my wife's friends and we go to the bar like izakaya and mm -hmm. everyone says uh if the waiter asks what would you like to drink and the wait uh, the people says ah oh, toria is a beer toria is a beer and I was thinking that, oh, what a popular company, beer company is this, should be so nice. That's 
yeah, me too. I want to be as tall as a beer. And one day after I finished my school, that was and the train station on the way back of my uh, school and the evening time, five, six, and get out from the train station, walk through the convenience store, convenience store, enter the convenience store and go to the in front of the, you know, drinks uh, area, mm -hmm. start to serve like kitten beer, okay. Supper of beer, okay, and ABC, okay, okay. But where is the Toriyasu beer? I couldn't see. Maybe it's in writing in Japanese. I can't see other beer companies there. They have Latin like alphabet, uh, but this probably uh, this is some local product or something. I should ask the staff. I just went to the regi, like registration there, a lady and with the really really broken <laughs> accent i asked to her uh, where is toriyai zubiru give me some toriyai zubiru and she just surprised and shocked eh? toriyai zubiru what do you want from me and i was trying to explain and uh, hold her hands drag her in front of the door, uh, the uh, refrigerator, and trying to explain her. Here, a piece of beer, okay. Supper of beer, okay. And uh, where is Toria is the beer? Doko desu ka? Doko desu ka? And she just surprised. And I told, I was thinking that she couldn't understand there is Toria is the beer exists on this refrigerator, in this refrigerator, but because of my accent, limited Japanese uh, capabilities, I couldn't explain her. Uh, I need someone who can translate this. Call, give a call to my wife, uh, say her, Junko, I'm in the convenience store and I wanna buy Toriyasu brand, Toriyasu beer, but my Japanese skills not couldn't enough to explain to her, can you say her, I want to buy Toria is a beer. And my, my wife, she told me that, hey, stupid. Toria is a beer is not a company name. Toria is a beer is mean, just beer, give me just beer. And I said, oh, okay, uh, sorry. And just run away <laughs> from the convenience store. And then, yeah, it's like, and that's a good story. Yeah, like uh, the first uh, one year, I had this kind of like uh, stories about that. Like, and yeah, one one time, um, we went to Asakusa Shrine, and you know, the, have you ever been there? There is oh, yeah. a big bowl. On the in the bowl, there is some you know, and some is it kaminari bowl? yeah or? yeah kaminari, and there is some smokes coming up, and people are getting oh yeah come to my come to me, this smoke will make me like cure that's like you know Shinto things, mm. and that was one month after I was in the home studying then suddenly i heard this yakimo i was yeah and what i what is that open the door window and there was a small truck behind the small truck like on the loading small like shrine something like shrine and one pipe, uh, smokes. And I was thinking, automatically I was thinking that this is a portable shrine, which is, is a, a mission from the shrine. The guy, he is the monk and he's blessing our neighborhood. I didn't think 
that he is just selling something. Uh, then right away, I just went there. I just wanted to take some pictures because I was thinking that this is so. And he saw me, he just stopped, look at me, no, uh, no English, uh, just English. I just trying to, and I was trying to, oh, good. I was thinking that he's blessing the neighborhood working. And then he just stopped, come to me and say something, couldn't answer, go back to the small shrine, open that and take out something, put it in the paper and give it to me. And I was saying that, thank you, thank you. And all these things. I was thinking that this guy from the shrine, he gave me blessed something, which if I eat this, that will, that's blessed food will help me cure. And this is what it, like stupid me. I was- the Blessed uh, potato. Yeah, blessed potato. <laughs> But this was not a blessed potato. That, that was just a, you know, the sweet potato. He is, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he was just trying to sell sweet potato. Not a shrine, not a monk. He's just a uh, simple. But my like prejudge about the Japanese culture forced me, dragged me to this stupid <laughs> story. And I was the, uh, and the worst thing I couldn't realize that he he's trying to sell. I was thinking that it's a gift from the monk and I have to say thank and go to my home. And I was, I just start, I just, just left, start to walk away from him. And he just started to try to stop me because he wants his money, but I couldn't understand that. <laughs> And I was thinking that, oh, I'm so you know, rude. I couldn't uh, appreciate, I couldn't show my appreciate enough. And then I have to, you know, like I have mm -hmm. to say, and I did really big, oh, arigato gozaimasu. And my wife, she just ran here the, next to the car. And she said, sorry, sorry, and did the, the conversation and she paid money and she started trying to he just come to Japan this is misunderstanding sorry he didn't want to sell uh, he didn't want to steal your sweet potato <laughs> this is just a misunderstanding explained and on the way back and she explained me this is sweet potato he was trying to sell it to you the not a shrine not a monk nothing this is misunderstanding, eat your sweet potato and please do not stop them again. <laughs> and yes, like uh, after this sweet potato thing, and yeah, I realized that if you live in Japan, if you wanna live in Japan, you do have to learn <laughs> what is their culture, what is the, what makes them happy, what makes them angry, what makes them comfortable. Yes, yeah, like, life, especially if you are in cultural things and in Japan and you, you need to discover something. What, what about you? Did you have some, this kind of uh, like stories or, and what was thinking that it's like? Well, so I already, by 2010, when I first went, I think, you know, at least for five years, I was already very interested or kind of wanting to go to Japan. It's like a lot of people have the dream, you know, kind of the, the mystical or that, um, you know, yeah, the, the image in the head is different than the reality. Um, so I was already kind of going through that a little bit when I was younger, like when I was 12 and 13, uh, Samurai and Ninja, of course, I enjoyed that. Um, but so, you know, I already studying Japanese, um, 16, and then um, 
I think I, I really wanted to feel like I had a purpose when I was first going. So, you know, I wanted to be confident, competent speaking and then, you know, have my book to, to show, um, you know, have a good one built, a good shamisen built. And um, well, in, in a way, karate and shamisen were my, my connecting points with Japan. So to feel a connection with Japan and the people, I wanted to have those, you know, solid enough. Um, so when I did, you know, then I went, and people have said that I, they, they give the whole, you know, oh, you're more Japanese than Japanese thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, and, they, they, they are just, yeah, Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and so already like going there, there wasn't the, um, what's that called? Uh, cultural, culture shock. There wasn't a culture shock going there. Um, and one of, and, and yes, I, I kind of had that whole, you know, Japanese have the, the proper way of doing something and there's a specific way it's done and um, you can't you know, diverge from this way uh, because it's meant to be this way. Um, this is what I was thinking. But at the Taikai that I competed at, um, there is a shamisen maker who he makes shamisen for the best players in Japan. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and he saw my book and he was happy to see, you know, this foreigner learning how to do the fashion. That's another thing I was worried is maybe they'll be offended that I'm you know, a gaijin building shamisen and such, but everybody was happy to see. And that's a testament also to just how, you know, few people are interested in shamisen in Japan. So if there's anyone showing this much passion, then it's a good thing. So he invited me to his workshop um, in Tokyo after. So the next month I, I visited and he, he said, oh, an interesting thing I saw was he had like templates for the shamisen, the tenjin, the headpiece. Um, and, but they weren't like the exact precise shape. They were maybe five millimeters oversize. And that's, and he said, it's just to kind of give the, you know, the rough shape and then it's just his eyes and his feeling after that. Um, and he's, he said, you know, the shamisen, it's just, it's just wood and skin and strings. It's, there's nothing magical. So if you have an idea to make it better, you know, just try it and see how it works. You know, it's very just experiment and try. And it, that kind of blew a hole in that whole, you know, in the, um, no, there's only one way and um, that's the Japanese way. Oh, no, that, it's, it's actually. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, changed you, right? Uh, yeah. Idea, but. Yeah. That open made a bit more open and relaxed about the whole thing. Yeah, that would be the main story. Yeah, that actually, there is, as you say, there is some so strict points they just want to keep. And there's also there's some like creative ways. Uh, they just, uh, the traditional things they really want to keep as, as, it, as it is. That's so strict. Yeah, it's like uh, sometimes uh, same as like you, sometimes we can have some prejudge about know that they supposed to be so strict about this. And then after we saw, oh, no, no, they're not. They're just small creatively, they're doing this. And first time, like there, there was three years before, and there is a small uh, Italian group which they visited Japan and there uh, I was like guiding, uh, mm. guiding them in Tokyo, Yokohama area and Yokohama. There were, we were in Yokohama Tsur. I was trying to 
introduce them and show them, guide them. Uh, Yokohama, as you know, Yokohama is older than Tokyo. And mm -hmm. many things about uh, Japan, Japanese culture, the music culture. For example, I like jazz and the Japanese jazz and the first Japanese jazz music, Japanese jazz music has been started in Yokohama, Noge and Noge area because the Yokohama was the second port city uh, which opened to the trade with the Europe. And that's why Europe and the United States, that's why some uh, uh, developments just entered from the Yokohama, tested in Yokohama and spread. For example, street lights, for example, street lights, for example, uh, American style or European style city plannings or any other, some other things, many things. And I was just trying this uh, tours and then suddenly the Italian couple, they just stopped me and they just said, okay, Dogon, thank you so much for your uh, wonderful tour, but uh, you know, we just want to see the real Japan. And I just, sorry, pardon me. What do you mean about the real Japan? It's not the fake fake Japan. This is <laughs> this is the real Japan, but uh, I couldn't get it. I'm sorry. Could you please more detail about that? Then she started to say, you know, this is modern Japan. Yeah, yes, this is modern Japan. You know, we want the real Japan. What is real Japan? Uh, you know, real Japan people has swords. People still wear kimono. People has the hat, chomake, chomake. And I was thinking that she wants to go the, there is some amusement parks. The concept is Edo parks. There is mm -hmm. some, yeah, Edo amusement parks. You can go there as a, like setup, a Edo movie setup, and you can mm -hmm. enter and one hour tour or two hour tours. There's a route into the uh, amusement park. You just walk through the path and the people around you, they are actors or something like that. They are the people around you in the setup pretend as like a Edo people and speak the small shops. They speak as like a Edo people, Seshava, Edo da Gozaru, something like mm -hmm. these kind of things. I was thinking that she wants to visit this kind of amusement park and wants me uh, and I said oh yeah yeah here uh, nearby the uh, Tokyo uh, just two hours by the uh, car and Ishikawa prefecture and Saitama there is this kind of amusement park that you can uh, we can visit we can uh, I can organize that and she said no 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 we don't want to uh, amusement park what she said, no, we know this is modern. And if we go to the ruler area of Japan, we know still people in the ruler area, Japanese people in the ruler area, they have their chonmake, they still wear kimono, and still they have swords and we wanna, and I said, I'm so sorry. I, Probably there is this kind of place, but probably this is just the amusement park. No more swords, no more chomake, no more samurai in Japan. And she was, she couldn't get it because the, her imagination, uh, her expectation about the Japan, yeah, Japan still has this kind of things. And yeah, that, that, my, that was my first time I saw, yes, we are the foreigner people. We are, 
sometimes we can have really positive, <laughs> uh, super uber uh, positive uh, prejudge uh, and image about the Japan. And yeah, and the next time, yeah, uh, we, I just started to tell them uh, with the tours, with the like uh, communicating with the people around. And I'm so sorry, Japan doesn't have a uh, sword again uh, anymore. Or anyway, yeah, sometimes people uh, we are, we can have. So this kind of image and, but your story that doesn't have is that uh, you and me has so many similar points mm. and so many, and we are enjoying Japanese culture. This is, uh, I saw that on your YouTube uh, videos and on your some concerts. And that was lovely. I love that. Oh, thank you. And, thank you. Uh, that's only one thing. And you were really prepared before you met real Japan. Ah, uh, yeah. And but I didn't. That's why I was really silly. <laughs> and... You have better stories, though. <laughs> you have much more enjoyable stories. No, the, the after you know, still I can't buy sweet potato. Still, <laughs> still, still. When I it's when we see sometimes when we see like sweet potato, the small trucks. Still, my wife she says, "They wanna <laughs> pray to him. They wanna pray to him. Come on, come on." Still, she is making me silly. Uh. Yeah, silly me. And yes, yeah, like my. Uh, in a good way that that can be like uh, makes life interesting. Yes, uh, and some parts uh, uh, so hard, you know, that's like uh, the thing. And actually, my point: living in Japan can sometimes can be a little bit tough challenge. Mm -hmm. To be able to so many foreigners uh, in my story, many foreigners, especially um, European or American foreigners, mm -hmm. they just give up on the on the way. Most of them, I saw many people who just give up the Japanese way because they can't speak Japanese or five six years in Japan no Japanese and uh, no Japanese friends, only Japanese people who has really fluent Japanese uh, English accent, mm -hmm. English. And some people they have so isolated like circle and yes, uh, I saw this kind of people who, and when, for example, one of my friend, when I asked to him, why don't you want to learn, like show more patient and work on the Japanese language? Why don't you wanna do, why don't you keep going? Uh, five years before you and me, we were, we met in Japanese course, but you still just hiragana, katakana, but mm -hmm. I, yeah, I have my certificate or all this kind of things. I evaluated now skill up. Why? And he told me that, uh, like, uh, I heard that when I was in United States, simple, why do I need to speak Japanese? One day, everyone will speak English. <laughs> yeah. I knew I knew a guy exactly like that in Japan too. His wife, his kids, all they spoke Japanese, and he didn't want to because he said it's it's better practice for them to learn to speak English. So yeah, that he who was doing the same. But I, I told him, your wife, she is doing all the paperwork for you, and 
all the things and there is a huge culture huge world is waiting for you to discover why don't you i'm okay with this i'm yeah and some uh yeah not so many foreigners and do this challenging and yeah you you saw you said the word social acceptance mm -hmm. and for me uh, japanese festivals help me to adopt this culture discover this culture and uh, as much as we know about this country and this culture uh, we can live we can live more comfort we can uh, mm. uh, this is what i was thinking and that's why i just wanted to and actually for me and um, festival festival was just a bug bug of <laughs> Japanese culture I found the box of system come on let's let's use it yeah and um, yeah why uh, is a in my uh, it's a bug bug yeah. and you know festival even some local festivals uh, some local festival even for the uh, even it's not open to the uh, near city or um, some uh, for example for Matsuri's in Osaka is totally different and mm -hmm. there is no welcome from the Tokyo or Chiba or this kind of places. And it's really, really conservative. Yeah, conservative. Mm. Really yeah. conservative. Yeah, to be able to, yeah, uh, for the, to be able to get the social acceptance. Uh, if you accept my uh, ID and I have to do something else, and Matsuri really helped me and get this social acceptance because they saw that, yeah, this guy also respect our culture and he do his best and he's not uh, copying or pretending. He's really doing something. And yeah, then we have to, we need to, respect back to his yeah. id his culture and i was like the the guy he the uh, uh, one guy he's uh, uh i just i couldn't remember the name um uh, come on and he has program uh Japanica, Japanization, and in NHK, uh, uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't remember the name. Uh, he's really old, and oh yeah, yeah, I think I saw. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I know. I think I saw one. Jap begin Japanology. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, this. Uh, uh, he's also DJ or not not DJ like uh, uh, doing some red radio radio shows mm. and also TV shows and uh, and couldn't get to remember and yeah. yeah his style and he's really he has really nice balance. He has knowledge about the Japanese culture. He is ex he has existence existence in Japanese culture with his ID. This is what I wanted to do. 
because sometimes you can see some people and and you can see some people like uh, for example 20 30 years old uh, foreigner trying to like uh, mutate mutate uh, mutation to the mm -hmm. japanese like trying to wear japanese trying to act japanese trying to speak as like japanese pe person uh, like this they just pretending as like japanese um, yeah that is that's the way they can do it no problem with this but i'm i, I came to japan after 30 i can't <laughs> i can't do this because and I will never have a good accent as like Osaka people, as like Tokyo people. Uh, after 20, after 40 years, still I will have my accent. And I can't wear as like, or pretend as like uh, Japanese because I can't, I can't. Yeah, I can show my respect, but I can't. I can have to build my like balanced way. And this guy was really nice. He has knowledge about the culture and this. And yeah, this actually my point. Yeah, I was just trying to keep my ID, adapt into the Japanese culture and live with it. I hope I will succeed. <laughs> succeed it. I think that's, I mean, I think that's healthier and that's a sign of, you know, personal acceptance in a way, because um, like myself from, you know, before 20, when 20, when I came and then until I was 23, it was the same. I, I really wanted to be Japanese, speak fluently where I would be accepted as a Japanese. Um, and then like at the end, like around when I was age 23 or so, I realized Oh, the, the more I was worried about this, the more I wanted to be accepted, the more I would stutter and I would talk not smooth and make mistakes and such. And then, you know, I just realized, you know, I'm never going to be, um, I'm never going to be Japanese. And I, but yeah, I mean, I'm always going to be seen as gaijin, but I am. So, you know, they don't mind. I mean, it's, I have friends, I have a connection, you know, it's, I don't have to be someone I'm not. So why am I trying to be someone I'm not? Um, and being relaxed, like accepting myself for who I am, um, that allowed me to be relaxed. And then I, I spoke better to my fluency came up because I wasn't afraid to make mistakes. I wasn't afraid to lose uh, a character, you know, it's just I'm, I'm myself. Um, and I think that's also comfortable for everyone around you because, you know, I'm sure we both, uh, oh, comfortable for someone around, um, to be around. Because I, you know, I think those people who are trying to be someone they're not, trying to be Japanese, they're trying to escape, is because they're trying to escape whatever unhappiness they have in their current self, their current you know, state. As you know, when I was younger, that's what I was. I was unhappy with several things, so I wanted to escape to be Japanese. Um, you know, and then when we see, you know, I've, I've met some people who are like that. They speak very fluently. They do the same mannerisms, everything, but, you know, trying to see past that surface character. I, you know, I always, nine times out of 10, there's an unhappy person inside in this shell and he's just trying to escape this unhappiness but it always follows him whereas there's other or on the other hand there's other people i know who they speak very fluently lived in japan but they have their own accents they have their own unique voice that doesn't sound like a japanese uh, you know doesn't have the hot zone um, yeah, but, yeah. You know, but they're very but they're very comfortable and they're, they're easy to talk to because I can feel they're happy and they're content, you know, humans inside. So they're just, you know, they're, they're just themselves in Japan, not this escape to 
put a costume on. Yeah, especially after the Olympic game, uh, after they just uh, mm -hmm. Japan just trying to upgrade uh, the society in Japan, because as you know, the <clears throat> Sakoku <laughs> has been finished uh, almost a hundred years before, hundred years ago, but the effect of the sakoku like close country isolated country uh, <clears throat> isolated country uh, mentality uh, has this mental affected japan still 1970 1980s and just 2000 the millennium japan was uh, wanted to build diversity, more colorful, not homogenic uh, society, more colorful, and also some local, uh, uh, local words like Shinagawa, Meguro, the, some local uh, governments, they just want to, uh, build more uh, international communities, healthy communities, which they just realized that, yeah, the people who live in Japan, foreigners who live in Japan, they can help us to uh, cure, not to cure, like fix or upgrade mm -hmm. or uh, reinstruct uh, the some issues in Japan because we need some the things and they just after the Olympic game they intensively they just uh, they start to use uh, uh, foreigners who live in Japan who has uh, knowledge and mm. about Japan and yes some uh, I'm the probably I'm the someone who is something like this, someone who is trying to uh, upgrade, uh, make more confidence about the diversity in Japan and, and helping them to make this country more global and mm -hmm. helping that's them, funny. yeah. And that's why like two years before, Actually, uh, we, we were working in some projects uh, uh, and then suddenly uh, the Super Matsuri, we were using uh, Japanese like tradition, art, music, and uh, odori, dance. We can use these things to introduce uh, Japanese culture. And if, if people can have a, uh, experience it, real experience. And then we can, uh, without any damage, if we can adopt these uh, things uh, as like entertainment and entertain mm -hmm. the foreigner people, foreigners in uh, Japan, maybe they can, that can help. And we just succeed uh, uh, Bon Odori Izakaya, Bon Odori oh, wow. project, yeah. And wow. in Tokyo, we just rent, uh, went to Izakaya company, Izakaya chain restaurant company. Tell them, could you please give us four hours uh, once a week? We can call bond dance groups and uh, we can arrange a plan and call foreigners people first uh, from 6 till 9 30 we can make an opening six people can come in sit on the sit on the tables watch the demonstration for example tankobushi odori Oh, yeah. And the one odori, they can watch it, enjoy it, 
then get some information. What is Tankobushi Odori? What is Tokyo Ondo? And enjoy and eat, get some drink, more chill out. And then the second part and eight, uh, the group can come in, come again and call, we can call them uh, dance with us oh. and they can dance and suddenly this concept um, yeah was really uh, popular yeah, that was really popular then and succeed and we uh, I we get an interview in Nikkei Shimbun Nikkei newspaper mm -hmm. Nikkei company and and then uh, with some other uh, projects then suddenly Japanese tourism ministries, ministry, some people from the Japanese tourism ministry visited our wow. Bonodori Izakaya and they said, oh, no, it's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. And some other projects. And I said, yeah, we just start. And uh, we were then suddenly and last year, beginning of the last year, and the government told me that also I knew, but Dogan 2020 will be 130 year anniversary of the Turkey Japan international relationship. You are from Turkey, right? Yes, I am. And can you, just an idea, can you arrange something else for us? Can just have a look if we, uh, ju we just try, we, we tried some, but um, you can. And I said, okay, I have some connections in Turkey, in Izmir, my hometown. I can call them and mm -hmm. maybe, and the government, the city mayor and the other people, they really helped me. Also, they told me after I called them, gave a call, they told me that, oh, what a surprise. We were planning to uh, celebrate 2020 uh, Japan year, Japan culture year in Izmir, in my Izmir wow. city. And it's a good uh, like coincidence. And yeah. you can, can, we can, we were planning to do some uh, Japanese cultural events, promoting events uh, and this kind of things. And I said, okay, let's do this. Then we start to plan this and project nippon promotion project actually we plan to do uh, this project in turkey in izmir city uh, this year may uh, may 23 20 uh, like one one of weekend three days in izmir city then suddenly, then suddenly, as you know, the corona spread the world and everything just canceled. Also, Japanese government and the Turkey, they just pressed me. There was a pressure on me, on my company. They, they were just saying that, no, Mr. please cancel this next year. Uh, we can do it later on. But um, the funny word, oh, Mr. Uh, Dogan, we can celebrate Japanese Turkish international in uh, relationship 130 year anniversary next year. And I said, I'm sorry, but mathematically next year will be 131 year anniversary, not the uh, 130. Anyway, it's like I said, okay, let me find out uh, anyway because probably in June, July, June, 
June. Yes, that was June. June, I realized that no, the corona will not stop, will not, but we will not start like 40 million tourists, uh, yeah. 2 billion tourism traffic in the world. No, 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 forget this. We will still next year summer, we will maybe we will not be able to uh, comfortably go to the Turkey, do this kind of events. That's why we have to find out something else. Okay, what we can do? Yeah, we can do that online. Nippon promotion project. I mean, promoting Japanese culture and online, uh, YouTube, Twitch, anything, and to the world. How we can do this? We can call some artists who wish to help us, support us to this lovely, unique Japanese culture, to introduce this culture to the world. And um, definitely, and we can call people. Yeah, come on, would you like to involve this? Would you like to help us? Would you like to uh, join us? And call some different artists who love, uh, has experience and love Japanese culture, help us. And we can organize an YouTube uh, or like live stream. Uh, actually, the, for the beginning, we didn't dare to do this live stream. We were, huh. we wanted to do this uh, record, get some different records, edit, put some effects and put it on the YouTube channel, make it premiere. Okay, two weeks, like next month, we will have like stream. Uh, mm. But I saw that, no, everyone do this. Everyone do this. And as much as we can, we can do the, of course we can uh, get some video records from the people who attend and edit this, put it in the program, but program can be real, real live stream from mm -hmm. Japan. And this idea, we like this idea. We get some also, uh, yeah, we 29th of November, Sunday, Japan local time, uh, 4 p.m from 4 p.m. till 8, 8, 8.40. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure because- Around. Uh, yeah, live stream, everything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, That's yeah, everything can happen, but I'm sure we're gonna start 4 p.m. Hmm. Just like Japan local time. And with the technical, that's gonna be three, uh, camera, technical, technic uh, uh, team, mm. director, art director, and everything is going to be something like studio. And we will uh, do a Matsuri. We'll try to make a Matsuri on the stage. And not a TV program, not a not something like that. We will try to live stream Matsuri and spread it to the uh, some uh, places, uh, Turkey, United States, and anyone who wish to watch. And right. we will stream also. We will stream your performance with your partner. And that's wonderful. And, and I have to say that I saw your records, uh, watch that. That was wonderful. Thank you. Nice Thank you. Musics and arrangement. Also, your uh, costumes was wonderful. Oh, and yeah. She, she made those or she got two different kimono and sewed them together. So it's two half that comes kind of as a whole. She has one half, I have the other. 
that's that one wonderful idea. That's wonderful idea. Like good combination. She's and yeah, creatively she's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> about this kind of things. Love that. And yeah, and what about she? Who can you tell us? By the way, before we just can you tell us about her? Uh, where did you Yeah, meet? actually I have to go in about three minutes. Oh, sorry um, about that. Oh, sorry. Might be something for another time. Uh, she uh she's been playing, well, she uh founded the first uh Shamisen group in Berlin. Um because I about five years ago or so, you know, she wanted to learn and there was nobody teaching. And she had some friends who wanted to learn too. So uh, the easiest way to get instruments and teachers in would be to form a group, like an NPO, um, get donations, fundraise. And then they flew in a, an instructor from a London um, and got some instruments and uh, yeah, that's how she, and then I, of course, I met her there in 2016. Um, and then a few years later, she came here to learn how to build a shamisen from me. Um, and then we just kind of clicked and then, yeah. yeah. Wonderful, yeah. you and like complete each other has really mm -hmm. nice videos and anyway, and yeah. yeah, probably that's the, I'm really over time. And after with uh, today, thank you so much for participating. I will edit uh, this uh, record and put it on the uh, uh, file transfer uh, cloud something. And I, I will send it to you. And if you wish, I will add uh, some uh, oh, subtitles. subtitles. Yeah, subtitles. And, oh, please, please. Yeah, subtitles for this and try to and edit, add, add subtitles and send it to you. If you wish, you can put it on your YouTube channel. And if you wish, uh, we can ask the people and if they like uh, this video, we can do the part two. Uh, sure. Yeah, if you wish, we can do the part two. And yeah. Yeah, and I also I will put it on my YouTube channel. And yeah, thank you so thank much you. for everything. It was oh, thank you for having. Thank you for uh, make having the time to uh, have this nice conversation. It's, it's it's wonderful to hear more about you um, and your history of you know being part in the Matsudi and how it's gone from there to now. No, actually, yeah, I I was uh, talking a little bit more, but. And I am really happy to meet with you. I'm so happy to uh, get your uh, stories about the Japanese traditional music. Thank you so much. Probably, oh, thank you. Yeah, oh. Probably, or for our next uh, time, you can, uh, if you wish, uh, you can, you wish to talk about more other things or anything. Thank you so much Absolutely. for thank everything. You, you're welcome. Hopes, hopefully one day I'll see you in person. We can yeah, meet. please. Anytime you wish, you have welcoming. Anytime you wish to come to Japan, you can visit me. You can stay with us. Well, thank you, you. Thank you. You're my guest. You're welcome. Oh, I, I, I shall bring some sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Bless. Thank you. Sweet potatoes, please. Bless, bless potatoes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Say my regards to your friends. Will do. Oh, Sue says hello. She sends her regards to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Say my regards. And will do. I will. I will. And see you soon. See you soon. Have a good Sunday. Have a nice, you too. nice day. Have a nice day. Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> Janet. Janet.